Hello friends! This week I am doing a review of the book Good Juju. Mojo's Rites and Practices for the Magical Soul, written by Nyjah Lightfoot. This is not sponsored, I bought the book myself because I was interested and wanted to learn more about the distinction between what I learned from Brujeria and the distinctions of other conjure paths. In this case, hoodoo. That being said, let's get into it. To begin with, this is very much an entry book. So if you are already well practiced or know a lot about hoodoo and voodoo or conjure in general, this is probably not the book for you. I still found it useful, as you can tell from all of the tags, mostly because of the personal anecdotes within the book. There's also a fair number of rituals and suggestions for various spells, uh, mojo, grease grease bags, certain candle spells throughout the book. So it can also be useful for that purpose. One of the things I like the most about this book is it is such a pleasantly conversational piece. Uh, Naja, I, I hope I'm saying that right, um, provides just, it feels like sitting down at the kitchen table and just having a lovely conversation over tea and sandwiches. Bonus points to this for being a very pleasant conversational read. There are a handful of places I tagged, or um, book note, that I wanted to bring up because as part of this conversational tone, she begins in the first chapter in the introduction this metaphor of building your house. And so this is on page six. As we begin at the beginning, we start with good intentions to lay the foundation of our spiritual house. Your house is the metaphor for all the knowledge, skills, and tools you will acquire as you journey on, the, on your path as a magical spiritual being. Slowly over time, as you lay one magical brick of experience upon the other, your house will take shape. As you seek knowledge, skills, and experiences, from the cupboards of life, you may find yourself gathering spiritual bricks from different masons. Some bricks may click right into place, and some may need a bit of sanding to smooth out rough edges, and others may not fit regardless of how you try to arrange them. This has been true to my personal experience. And so I have, I really enjoyed <laughs> reading from someone who, while we disagree on several things. We agree on this. We agree that there is a lot of overlap across different magical practices, across different religions, across different paths, because we're still all human. And the human experience, as much as politics and media wants to divide people, we have a lot more in common as humans than we have different. So I appreciated that the book started with that, not so much disclaimer, but with that metaphor. Um, we're just going to quickly flip from sticky note to sticky note. Oh, also, I appreciated that she, early in the, in the book, this is on page 18, stated, However, it must be stated to never substitute magic in place of seeking professional help when it is needed. One need not rule out the other. Both modalities can and do work famously together to bring healing, hope, and balance to one's life. This is what I have learned as well. I have studied Reiki, I have studied Brujeria, uh, Bio-Universal Healing, Qigong, uh, a variety of other stuff, and I've, learned, I've seen this with all of them. There is a lot of good that can be accomplished through the various folk healing practices. That does not negate the need for healthcare. 
That does not negate the need for relying on the social services as we need them. They work hand in hand. Moving a little further ahead, I also appreciated that she said this. Changing and morphing rituals into ones that personally speak to you is the first sign of a true practitioner. Our craft grows through creation, change, and practice which I agree with wholehearted. Oh, this was, so this is one of the things that I really liked about this book, um, now that I'm reading out some of these quotes. She is so down to earth, so practical. Yes, this is a book about hoodoo, about magic, about rituals and spells, but it's also grounded in reality. It's, you know, are you under attack or have you just not slept? Are you having a really bad day because a spirit's following you? Or did you just not eat lunch? Mm. Address the mundane first, and if there's still a problem, then get magical. Uh, those are my words, not hers. Just kind of sums up the philosophy. Her words that she does state multiple times throughout the book are... Hoodoo is about doing what needs done when it needs doing. Actually, that is shockingly similar to something that my grandpa said all the time. So much so that my grandma made quote cards that she, <laughs> that she sent out to all the grandkids. My grandfather used to say, do what is right and do it now. And what is right varies based off of the circumstances. But you do what is right in that moment. As she explains about spell work basics, uh, one of her first observations is spell work is fun. Don't forget to have fun while you are doing magic, which I think is a wonderful reminder. Oh, yep. Here she again says, uh, in hoodoo, we say, do it when you need it. So uh, that's a, a repeat. Ah, yes. So this is another one that overlaps with other things I have studied in the past. So this is on page 74, talking about altars still. Power and energy build up in places over time. Just as we use the act of smudging to cleanse and release negativity from a space, a personal altar holds and builds energy from our prayers and from the magic we work there over time. 100% agree. 100%. I came to this first from a different place, uh, actually from when I was studying Shintoism, which believes that all objects have a spirit. The more attention and dedication an object receives or a place receives, the more powerful it becomes. That's why you end up with shrines all across Asia. And it's not just Shintoism. This is really any animist religion believes this. But that's why you end up with a lot of shrines that are where an event happened, and so people go to review that event, to remember it, and then temples and shrines are built around them. Oh, this was another excellent point that I wish more people adhered to, even though it is becoming more common. I, I will acknowledge that. As I've been watching more and more creators online, I've been seeing this being more common. So on page 97, she says, so if someone calls your mojo by a different name, don't be alarmed. It simply depends on where you are from and how your tradition was handed down. At the root of our power is our belief in the ancient ways of our ancestors, who held the mysteries, the sun, moon, and stars, sacred. They learned how to work magic and attract the conditions into their lives that resulted in positive change. They learned how to get their mojos working. One of the reasons most of the, shall I say, practical knowledge in this book, the rituals, the actual working of spells, I really didn't learn anything from, is because of the immense overlap across the various traditions of conjure. I am well versed in brujeria. I studied for a little over two years with Katrina Rasbold. Because of that, a lot of the actual actions I already knew just by different names. The difference between mojo and grease grease bags, or um, so just because it has different names doesn't mean that it's not the same thing or that 
someone is wrong for using a different name. Ah, yes. This is one of the other things that I like about Conjure in general. And she states it so well here. It's the mindset behind why and how you do things. This is on page 100. So when you work hoodoo, it is into this mindset that you must go. This is not high or ceremonial magic. This is the magic of the people, of those who had to turn to ancient ways and remedies, magic and folklore, to protect their homes, families, loved ones, and even their livestock to survive. This is do what works, and do it when it needs done. You don't need to wait for the proper moon cycle, or the proper day of the week, or to have the right astrological signs. Sure, that helps, that can be good, that can be beneficial, but you don't need it to have a successful spell. Uh, along those same lines, there are no wrong or right words. Let your heart and intuition guide you as you carve into your camp. And so the, the later section of the book is actually what I enjoyed the most, even though I don't have a lot of notes there, because it's all about her personal experiences of how it's essentially her cautionary tales of, don't worry, this happens to almost everyone. When you're dealing with incense and smudging, you're gonna sometimes set off fire alarms. Did you mean to? No. It happens though. So overall, my thoughts on the book. Very enjoyable read. She has a way with words that is very pleasant. Like I said earlier, it's like sitting down with a friend, having a, a nice lunch in their kitchen, at their kitchen table. As far as practical knowledge goes, if you are beyond novice level in any conjure tradition, you probably won't gain a lot of magical knowledge from this book. But instead, like me, you'll probably enjoy reading her anecdotes and <laughs> magical mishaps, because we all have them. <laughs> We've all got those, those fire alarm incidents in our lives. I did have a moment of personal gnosis while reading this book. Because of just a one-off phrase that was stated in the book, which is, why is it called the craft? or a craft in witchcraft, because you're building something. If you're not building or creating or manifesting something, it's not a craft. And as I have looked at the various practitioners I've met throughout my life of many different paths, the ones who are actually effective, the ones who are enjoyable to be around, it's because they're constantly building. They're constantly crafting, they're constantly making, and that doesn't necessarily mean physical crafts, but they are building community, they are building relationships, they're not tearing each other down. And I think that is something that has been lost in many circles of the world right now. So it is my earnest prayer and desire that anyone who has watched this video or any of my other videos can focus on the craft of life whether that be a physical craft, whether that be your metaphysical practice, whether that is witchcraft, any form of craft. May your creations be successful. Until next time, walk in the light, my friends. All right, time for a shameless plug, because I forgot, again. If you're liking this content, do me a favor, hit the like button, share, comment, subscribe, I'd really appreciate it.